Hi, I'm David Shaw, head of the Regent Street portfolio at the Crown Estate. We're in quadrant three, one of the latest developments in the 20 year regeneration of Regent Street by the Crown Estate. Key to our success is the response of the community and our customers. And key to their considerations are sustainability, whether it's social, economic, or environmental. This is an award-winning building for sustainability and great credit to our partners, Stanup and Sir Robert McAlpine. So sit back and enjoy a presentation on sustainability by Amy Shuttleworth. Hi, I'm Amy Shuttleworth. I'm the Sustainability Manager for Sir Robert McAlpine. I'm actually located on the Quadrant 3 building, which is a new development just between Soho and Regent Street. I'm just going to give you a snapshot today of how sustainability has really influenced decision making through the design, procurement and construction phases of this brand new development. So waste was a major theme of sustainability that we really concentrated on this project. The aspects that we looked at were designing out waste to start with, so reducing the amount of waste actually generated on site. We actually only produced about seven metres cubed of waste per 100 metres square gross internal floor area. So we were vastly below or above best practice, whichever way you want to say it. The other aspect was also recycled content. So this concrete, for instance, that I'm standing at the moment is 100% replacement aggregate. We used a stent, which is a waste product from the China clay industry in replacement for dredged aggregates. And we didn't just use it for 25%, which a lot of projects do, we used it for 100%. We were the first project that we know to have ever achieved such a high figure. On top of that, we used PFA, which is pulverised fuel ash, a waste product from coal power fuel stations, in lieu of cement. We used about 40-45%. That dramatically reduced embodied carbon by about 1,000 tonnes. So above me is the atrium, which was central to Dixon Jones's design for this building. One of the key reasons why it is included is to let natural light into all of the floor plates in the offices, which reduces the reliance upon electricity and lighting. Lighting is responsible for approximately 30% of operational carbon footprint, so it's having a vast impact in terms of sustainability and energy. So the social aspects of sustainability are really important to us. One of the things that we did was to forge a special relationship with the Soho Parish Primary School. One of the activities that we did with them was actually bury a time capsule here during the construction phase when we are actually putting the steelwork up. The children wrote letters about what they thought the environment would look like in 50 years time so that when we actually open that time capsule we'll be able to have a snapshot of the children's perception of what the environment would look like. We also put a copy of the Times and an iPhone in there just to sort of show the technology and the news of that period. So we're on the roof here on the Quadrant 3 project. Now this is a great space to maximise increasing biodiversity in the West End. Some of the things that we did were bring in some beehives so that they could feed off the nectar from the biodiverse reef that you can see. We've also included nesting boxes for red starts, which are an endangered species, and also an insect box that was actually made by the children of the Soho Parish Primary School, a couple of hundred metres away. Now, we don't just have a traditional boiler room on this project. One of the unique things of this development is that we've actually created a district heating scheme with the lead generators being a hydrogen fuel cell and a CHP unit, which is combined heat and power. Between those two, they produce about 17% of the base electricity, cooling and heating load. Thermal stores store all of the waste heat that's generated by the CHP unit and the hydrogen fuel cell. So we're not wasting anything. Usually that heat would go up into the atmosphere and be lost, but we store it in these coffee-like flasks so that we could use it at times of demand. So now we are in the chiller room and I'm standing next to the absorption chiller, which utilises waste heat to generate cooling. Behind me, you can also see the complex pipework 
which we use BIM, a 3D modelling system, in order to reduce waste and also prefabricate it off-site. Here in the tunnel, you can actually see the infrastructure that we've put in place in order for this decentralised energy centre to be executed and work. You can see the chilled water pipe work, the hot water pipe work and the electricity which is running to three other buildings in the surrounding area. Now this tunnel actually has a dual purpose, not just to transport waste, heat and cooling and electricity. The materials for Café Royale have to actually come through the Quadrant 3 building and are transported underground, not seen on Regent Street or having an impact on traffic. We're surrounded here by lots of water tanks. Now the most important one is actually the reclaimed water or the rainwater harvesting tank. All of the water which falls into the building is collected in this 35 cubic metre tank and is then filtered and used for flushing all of the toilets in the building, really reducing our water footprint. So I really hope you enjoyed listening and seeing a snapshot of sustainability on the Quadrant 3 development. I'm going to leave you with one last fact. The way that we constructed this building, we also looked at ways to reduce the carbon emissions. The way that we reduced it by over 60% was the use of a consolidation centre. We're now going to be using this as best practice on most of our projects. I really hope that more projects will be built in this way so that we can have a more sustainable future.